Good morning and welcome to what's happening at WCS. Uh, it is a beautifully slightly warmer than last week, but rainy still Monday. But you know what? We're thankful that it's not freezing out there right now. Uh, so wanted to come to you with something a little bit different. So uh, we've been trying to track our progress and our changes. And you can't you can see that. I got to remember which hand I'm showing you. Watch. Okay. All right, so we've been tracking our changes with you over the last two months, and I wanted to bring uh, one of the latest developments, and that is in the field of technology training. Uh, this is a new endeavor for Goodwill Columbus, especially here at WCS. Uh, I know at our Edge Hill headquarters, we do have an IT certification program uh, that individuals uh, can go and check out and actually get a certificate to work in the information technology field and that is for just anybody who comes in off the street and wants to better their life and their career can do that uh, here at WCS with our clients we do face certain challenges but they do have a lot of potential there's a lot of talent here and with the individuals and clients that we serve you guys there at home um, this is for you uh, we have heard your uh, ideas and your suggestions and this is can't see that hand see I'm, I'm a big hand talker you would think I'm part Italian but I'm not uh, so as I'm, I'm I'm saying stuff as you see I'm, I'm shaking that hand but you can't see that uh, I, I feel like I got a speech impediment at the moment I apologize not only do I have a face mask but half my body's cut off but that's me so <laughs> because you guys have voiced a lot of uh, I would say a lot of passion, a lot of desire to learn more about computers and technology. Uh, we're actually going to implement that as part of our vocab training here at WCS. Uh, as you see behind me, we've got a, not a plethora because there's not enough to be a plethora. We have a small assortment of things to come. Uh, learn how to take stuff apart, put stuff back together, computers. Uh, learning about laptops and all this stuff appropriately and so as part of that growth and and change in direction I have been very diligent about who I am hiring in uh, for staff to help us drive these programs forward and as as such I have with me today Gary who is going to be leading our skills lab for tech zone so without further ado Gary's going to kind of break down some of the things that you guys are going to be learning about here and if anybody has any questions, please feel free to ask. I am, see, I, I'm shaking my phone on the other hand. Um, please chime in and ask, and we'll see if we can get those questions asked. Answered. Yeah, <laughs> see, it's too early and I haven't had enough caffeine. <laughs> All right, so, so exciting. I'm going to turn this over to Gary. So, Gary, what do you got for us today? Well, everybody carries a computer with them all the time in their phone. Everyone works with a computer. So what we want to be able to do is understand our computer uses and those possibilities. When you are able to understand the device that you've got, whether it's the phone in your hand or whether it is something you set on a desktop, whether it's something that you have as a tablet, all these are going to be used in home, in work, in school, and they are no longer a luxury. They're no longer a want. So everyone that has these devices has a need because they are a great resource to be able to use. So if you understand some of the uses and the possibilities, for example, if you are going to use them with word processing to be able to type, to write, to email, to text, you can write a book, you can make notes, you can send messages. If you want to use a computer to record, just for recording your own voice to make music, songs, photograph. If you want to design something with architectural designs, woodworking, to do math, to do art, the, the possibilities just go on and on and on with what you're going to be able to use with these computers. But to get to the computer itself, and understand some of those things, our skill lab wants to be able to take these devices 
and understand that personal smartphones, tablets, iPads, laptops, Windows, Apple, Chrome, Android, power box computers, understand the guts computer, be able to take one apart, put it back together. Maybe you want to put together a computer for somebody specifically or yourself and you want to know what you put in there for the best gaming apps. Maybe you want to be able to do something just for word processing. Maybe you want the correct application to be able to print something out and how to use the printers. If you want to use a mouse, not use a mouse, how much memory. So a lot of it can snowball into so much information that it can sound confusing. But the idea is not to confuse. The idea is to make it simple. You have more memory and more information in your smartphone today than what we had in 1969 when we sent our first astronauts to the moon. So that sort of information, which at that time carried about 8,000 characters of information. Today we're looking at a very, very basic phone that carries 8 billion pieces of information. So we have these very complex sounding machines that do very simple tasks as an extension of how we're going to think. If you can't remember anything, if you can't remember something, you can write it down and store it in a computer. So we want to be able to help people understand what you can do with a computer, how you can operate it, how you can take it apart, how you can put it together, and actually do it fairly easy. Um, a couple of years ago, I bought my son a gaming computer that everywhere else would have cost about $2,000. And we designed it and we put it together for about $400. He's still using that today. We chose our operating system because we knew what it was intended for. You're not going to go out and buy a car that can do 200 miles an hour when you can only buy, when you can only drive 70 miles an hour on the freeway tops. So you learn what the differences are on what you want and what you need. So we're trying to make a difference in how you're going to think and use this technology, not only to help yourself, but to help everybody around you and the work environments that you go into. So what are some of the challenges um, that you think we might face uh, with this learning program coming and to individuals who mainly just use tablets to listen to music and play games? I, I think the biggest challenge is getting past intimidation, that I can't do that because of whatever reason it might be. Good point. And in computers, the word can't does not exist. Don't want to, maybe, So but not can't. Anything that you want to be able to accomplish, that you want to be able to achieve, is just a matter of finding the correct device to do it on, at the right time, at the right place, with the right setup. Okay. So you may be able to watch a movie, for example, or something as informational as a documentary, listen to music on YouTube, but you may not want that small screen up in front of you, but that doesn't mean that you can't play what you want from your computer, from your personal device, to a larger device. There, there are a lot of different directions you can go, and it doesn't have to be about how much money you have, it's about what it is you actually want to achieve. So do you have any kind of basic um, like lesson figured out for what would be like one of the first one or two lessons you would teach in this tech zone? I, I think the first thing to understand is, is that where we used to write, now we type. That doesn't mean you stop writing, but now you're typed because this is the way that we get the information from here to here. 
with our computers, we go from here to here. But a computer will allow you to take that information that you're putting in and have it come out in a format that everybody can understand because a computer communicates hmm. very appropriately. So with that in mind, if you are simply going to sit down to understand your word processing skills, you learn to communicate in that. And a computer will help you with that. So you've got spell check that you can use. You can have a conversation with somebody and when they don't understand something, you can go back and reference what it is that you type. Oh, this is what I had down. This is what you understood. And you can go back and have a recorded record of those things. So it, it, it will make much more sense to be able to understand that all you're doing is just making sure that what comes from here to here so that somebody can understand what's going on. Okay. Now, is there anything that they can work on at home that would get them prepared either with gross or fine, not gross, but fine motor skills or any kind of reading or any kind of YouTube videos or any kind of web exploration within their limits they can do to prepare themselves to come in for day one of your class? I say to you, yes. Yes. <laughs> That's what we like to hear. Yes. Um, when I was doing some instructing and, and teaching at a, at a college level on, on this information, one thing that a lot of the higher ups didn't want to hear me say, but the truth is, is that one of the best things you can do on your phone, on your computer, is play games. And it doesn't seem like it's going to teach you that you'll be wasting your time, but when you're playing games, you're learning the gestures that you're going to use with your phone, with your tablet, with the two-in-one laptops that fold, that you can use touch screen with, uh, that you can input with, with gaming machines, uh, whether it's an Xbox or it's a PS4 or the PS5 that's coming out. You're learning to use the peripherals, the controllers. So you are adapting not to what the machine is, but the machine is adapting to you for what is best. So you can talk and type. You can type. You can use your thumb, your finger, your gestures. And this is all relative. So it adapts around you. If you ever use a program that is so difficult to use that it's more work to learn how to use the program than to actually do what the program is intending to do, then you don't want to use that program. You would never play a game that wasn't fun. So games are a very good place to start, you know, in, in doing things. You okay. can get them to connect to anything, anybody, anywhere at any time. Well, I think most of our guys here are very adept at playing games, especially on tablets. So that definitely gives them a leg up, which means the intimidation factor is not going to be as high. Uh, there shouldn't be as much fear or anxiety coming in because as you hear here from the person who is going to be teaching you these skills, if you can play games on a tablet or a phone, you can start learning how to program all this stuff. Very basic. That even I myself, who is very, I know enough about computers to make an IT person mad. Uh, and, and that says something about my level of skill. So even I feel that it's not as stressful to maybe sit in on one of these classes and learn a thing or two. I mean, how many of you out there wish that you could design a game for a phone? Or is there an app that you think would better your chances of getting a career out in a community or something that would help you stay on task it could even be a business i know there's there's you know app development there's hundreds of apps probably developed every day whether they all make it to google the google store or not i couldn't tell you for sure one way or the other but it's exciting to know that you know this is a, a field here to stay and we need to start embracing it and be a part of it learn how to do it and the fact that we have confidence in you guys at home that you'll be able to learn this stuff that we're bringing it in the shop to teach it. What else you got for us, Gary? 
again, the computer works for you. You don't work for the computer. So that computer will do what you ask it to do. So if you wanted to learn to um, write music, play music, if you want to record music, if you want to become an artist, and then take that and know how to spread that about so that you can make money off of it. Uh, if you want to understand language, if you want to uh, do photography, all the instruction is there. You have the greatest resource for learning in the last 500 years in the internet. It hasn't been since uh, the printing press was invented uh, that we can do whatever we want, when we want. And you, it's important to understand that if you want to be an individual business, that you are as competitive with the internet now and understanding computers that Apple, IBM, Facebook, any business is because your voice is out there and it's just a matter of how you're going to speak to either one person or a thousand people or the entire nation, the entire world. You have that possibility to do that now. And it all starts by simply understanding your devices and how they work. How to be able to um, simply do a Google search. We use Google, but there are over a thousand search engines. But how do you search for something? How do you find something? How do you get information to be able to understand it yourself and pass it on. And I do it every day. It doesn't matter if it's a word or if it's spelling or if it's something that somebody asks me a question on, I can simply go to a search which entails something then else. Um, how to keep everything secure so that your information doesn't get invaded by somebody that you don't want. Uh, I've been a victim of theft identity. I've had uh, people try to take information and you learn to digitally encode this information so that basically you're locking it up in a safe so that every day when you're on your phone, you know how to operate and no matter what you have to say, somebody can't get into that device, phone, computer, and pass it on. That's your information, that's private information that you want to make sure that you are secure with, that you're safe with. And you have to feel safe with that. Because if you don't, then you're going to be just doing this. And it's, it's going to be much more difficult to communicate and learn that way. Speaking of safety, I know that there's some concerns. You've got questions out there you haven't asked yet. Uh, but I, I do want to let you guys know that we're just not going to have an open Wi-Fi or open source internet or anything uh, where individuals will be coming in and all of a sudden they're creating uh, dark web pages. That's not what we're planning to do here. We do know that there are certain individuals who have restrictions um, by their respective teams and our goal is to keep everybody safe. So we're starting from non-web stuff and teaching them all the basics first and then we're gonna then go into very heavily monitored web activity. And I'll, it'll, I'll be straightforward. Uh, and so that way we keep our individuals safe and we keep the community safe at large. Because the, the one thing that, you know, say you have an individual who is not allowed unmonitored access to the internet. How do you teach this person how to do web design in a safe manner? Let me ask our tech expert right here. If I have somebody who has trouble staying on normal websites and goes to a more deviant nature, but he's really interested in the computer field and he's really got the intelligence for it, how can we safely teach him how to create a website without him going off onto these other sites? You, you set up a secure network so that you limit where they're going to go. You would not allow your two-year-old that's learning to walk to go and touch the stove. You put a barrier between them and the stove. So 
in computers, we put a security system in that's a barrier so that they can only go so far. You're trying to keep people safe physically, mentally, emotionally, physically, while still being able to give them the possibilities of what it is that they want to grow into and how they want to think about their lives and enjoy things. It can't be just about the two-year-old burning their hand on the stove. It has to be about the walking and the talking. It has to be about learning to be appropriate about things. And a computer allows those parameters, those barriers, to be there for a good purpose. It doesn't allow them to go somewhere that they shouldn't be. So that, again, it allows them to push them back in the middle, just like you're guiding a, a horse and buggy. You don't allow a horse and buggy to drive off the mountain. You keep the blinders on, you keep them focused on the road where they're supposed to be. Very nice, very nice. Okay. Uh, no questions yet from out there in the community. That's okay. You can always post later. Um, you have anything else for us, Gary, before we wrap up? No, I, I just... I don't want anyone to think that this grand plan is, is too ambitious because you can learn something new every day and you can use it every day, but it's not just here. This is just part of the classroom that you're in. The next classroom that you go into is the one at home where you can learn to communicate greater values of what you want to do with your life with each other, by yourself, at home, at work, in the community, doesn't matter where you are. You know, we, have a, we have a technology possibility that is just another extension of where your brain is. And it doesn't matter if you think that you can or can't learn something, a computer will help you think. And that's what we want to do. Couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, I hope you guys are just as excited about this opportunity as we are here. Uh, we can't wait to get more individuals back uh, to our workshop in a safe manner and start teaching a lot of these new different skills. And with this tech program here and computers, and uh, it just gives me goosebumps. And I hope you're at home getting goosebumps too because this is going to be very exciting. A uh, really huge plan for us in the future. And this is, this is one of the things that we are definitely uh, putting a lot of resources behind to help get it off the ground because, you know, there's so many more job opportunities out in the, compu out in the computer for the community. I'm getting all tongue-tied. I'm not excited. There's so many community jobs out there right now that are in the computer field, and I feel that a lot of our individuals do have the skills that they could be in that in some capacity or another, and this is just the first step. Absolutely. So, then uh, my thanks to Gary for coming to explain him some of this stuff. That was just way over my head anyways. Uh, that's why I bring in the experts. And thanks for joining us today. Uh, join us again next Monday, and we'll explore a new section of our new designed book camp programming here at WCS. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Monday. My name's Curtis. This is Gary. Peace out. <laughs>